My name's Angie Coombs and I'm the general manager here at the Duchy. I've been here three years and I was brought in to project manage the new building and the additional facilities that we've added and to look at ways of developing the business so that it has a sort of sustainable future involving the cafe, the retail and other things. The Duchy Nursery is just about half a mile out outside the town of Roswithiel. It's in a very wooded setting. It looks across to Lanhydrock on the back part of the National Trust Estate. It's a lovely place to be, on a sunny day especially. Initially, the nursery was set up to grow transplant trees for the Duchy Estates. So it's always been at the heart of the Duchy Enterprises in Cornwall. And then it started as a retail nursery about 35 years ago. Most horticultural businesses are sort of separated into garden centres and traditional nurseries and this has always been a traditional nursery and over its history it has supplied garden designers and done quite a lot of larger projects. That sort of trade diminished over the last few years to some extent, there's less of that kind of work around and people's expectations when they go out to shop for anything these days is they want better facilities. The development of the plans for the new buildings have taken quite a long time. We had quite a serious fire here about six years ago which demolished the existing shop and cafe. His Royal Highness Prince Charles, who is the head of the Duchy of Cornwall at this stage, has been very involved in the design and how we created the concept that we wanted to create here. He is very interested in architecture and he's very interested in gardening. He's a wonderful gardener at Highgrove and he wanted to incorporate some of his interests and some of his passions into how things were designed. So it was absolutely wonderful that he and the Duchess were able to come and open the new buildings on July the 12th this year. We were lucky enough to have Annabel Elliott, who is a well-respected interior designer who's worked on the Duchy of Cornwall holiday cottages over the last few years. And she was brought in to help us develop a style and something that was quite unique in its design. And she has been responsible for sourcing a lot of the fixtures and fittings. We decided we didn't want a shop that looked like any other shop. We didn't want to use just standard shop fittings. We wanted to display the products to their best advantage and to make it an interesting experience to shop here. So she, for the last two years, has been out there buying old dresses, old costermongers carts from Covent Garden, all sorts of old and antiquated vintage items that we could make the place look really, really unusual. And so that was the backdrop. One of the other themes running through the shop is that we've used recycled things and we also have tried to sell things which are made from recycled materials produced by local producers, artisan designers, local potters. So we've brought their designs and their work into the shop. We've got a really sort of eclectic mix of things in there. Predominantly it is a garden shop, so half of the shop is taken up with everything that a serious gardener needs, so the usual tools and seeds and gloves and aprons that you would expect to find. Whether you're buying something that you need to use yourself or you want to buy a gift for somebody that loves gardening, there's all those sort of things. Alongside that we've got a range of our own branded gifts and goods that we've developed using the Duchy of Cornwall brand our own tea towels and stationery and our own pots to put plants in, etc. But we've also got some luxurious items. We've sourced items from around the world as well, some unusual things that you don't find everywhere else. It was incredible to see the amount of pride that everybody had in what they'd contributed to this building, which will be here for hundreds of years. It's wonderful to look across the valley and see Restormal Castle perched up there on the hill and think that the very first Duke of Cornwall was responsible for creating that castle. And here we are in this wonderful building now, and the current Duke of Cornwall was responsible for creating this. And it's nice to think that they nod to each other across the valley. Hi, my name is Richard Chappell and I'm the head chef at Dutchie Nursery. The kitchen opens at 10 o'clock. We serve food from 10 till 4.30. We do a range of vegetarian meat and fish, so we try and get something in there for everybody. 
I would say they're not particularly big meals, more sort of light lunches. I'd describe them as large starters. The food that we source all comes from local companies. We serve local produced wines, ciders, 90% plus of which is sourced in Cornwall. I can't actually off the top of my head think of anything that we don't get from at least the southwest. We get all of our dairy produce from a farm less than a mile up the road, with a farm, and that's from cream, eggs, milk, butter, anything dairy, apart from a couple of cheeses that we use. The most popular dish I would say is the belly pork, it goes down really well. The feta and spinach tart is very popular and out of the sandwiches probably the croque monsieur. I would personally recommend the belly pork, I've been cooking that for years everywhere I go and it always sells. I think eating up at the Duchy, the main attraction is the surroundings and I hope one of the, the highlights is the food as well. In fact, it's all homemade, I think, sort of sets us apart from other cafes. It is a really nice, relaxing atmosphere up here. I think the staff as a whole work well together and that sort of has a harmony feel on the whole place, which customers feel that as well. The sort of trend within catering for quite a while now has been keep it local, keep it seasonal, keep it fresh, homemade, and we're ticking all those boxes, so I think that's why we're so busy. Hopefully with some events we'll be able to sustain that. I think the sort of building is has wowed a lot of people and generated a lot of interest. So I see this place being busy all year round. We're really proud of the building and the way that it's turned out. And it does actually represent the best of really good sustainable building practice. You know, using things like oak window frames and a developed timber frame building. We've brought into it using a wood pellet boiler, which generates all the heat for the buildings and for the new glass house, which is quite an unusual concept. It's very cost effective and very low impact on the environment. We've also adopted a rainwater harvesting system, which takes the water from the roof. Wherever possible, we used local companies. People like Derek and Brown, who are based in Bodmin, do a lot of heritage work. They created the cob walls, which make the shop and Carpenter Oak, who are based down at Totnes, did most of the framework and carpentry. We are a nursery rather than a garden centre, and the thing that sets us apart is that we're producing a lot of our own plants. Within the general range, we have three serious specialisms. They're conifers, camellias and fuchsias. We reckon to grow about 50% of what we sell. We propagate nearly all the fuchsias that we sell from cuttings, probably 50 to 75 percent of the camellias, similar sort of proportion of the conifers that we sell. We have a pretty good range in several other areas, such as bamboos and magnolias and fruit. We do a very big range of plants, mostly hardy stuff. We have a glass house and we do conservatory plants, but apart from that it's all hardy plants. We've always had a reputation for having really knowledgeable people that knew about plants and they really care that you have a good experience whether you're buying a hydrangea, a gift card or whether you're having a bowl of soup. We apply the same standards to customer service and care. Just creating the new plant sales area, it's on different levels, it's got lots of interest now, it's not just straightforward lines of plants laid out on the ground. We've tried wherever we can to make it more interesting and incorporate other things amongst the plants. People love to come outside and sit and have a coffee in amongst the plants and I think it inspires them to think what they could buy and what they were likely to take home with them today. They'll come in the morning, sit and have a coffee, read the paper, have a little chat about what they want to get out of the day. And they're now sitting down and thinking about ordering some lunch. And then maybe an hour later still, they're still sitting on the terrace with a glass of wine looking across at the castle. I think that's great. It's becoming part of a day out. As time goes on and we develop the facilities, we'll make it more interesting, provide more things for families to see and do, and we incorporate other people's tastes, aside from just the very, very keen gardeners. You don't have to want to buy plants to come here. There's plenty of other things to see and do. We're going to develop the woodland walks from here where you can walk down through the Duchy Wood and into Lost Withiel. There's lots of things to see and do down there. Or you can walk to the Spring and onto the National Trust grounds. 
It's fantastic on some days how many dogs come and enjoy a walk around the nursery. We allow dogs absolutely everywhere except just inside the cafe, but they're welcome to come and sit on the terrace and walk through the nursery grounds. One of the things we really wanted to do now moving forward is to inspire a younger generation of gardeners. And I think younger people sometimes don't appreciate the fun, the relaxation that you get from being in the garden. Children enjoy coming and having a look around. You know, we've got crane in the cafe, we've got a small kids selection in the shop and we've got some nice traditional toys and things. Some people only have so much as a window box or a couple of pots on their patio. You don't have to have acres and acres of land to want to plant a garden. So we're trying to just make it much more accessible. We started doing mail order a few years ago and I think buying plants online has been one of those things which was slow to kick off really. People like to see and touch and smell and know exactly what they're buying when it comes to something that's alive as plants are. People know of our reputation, they know about the nursery, they visited here in person or they know somebody that has. We've been able to demonstrate that we can supply plants and other things to just the same high standard as we do if they're able to come and visit in person. I've got a really good team of staff that look after that. Cara looks after the administration and the organisation of that. She's very methodical. And we have another lady called Renee who's an absolute whiz at packing. And we get regular emails on a daily basis where people compliment us, they're delighted, they can't believe that they were sitting in their armchair yesterday looking at the internet and making an order. And the curry has just been and delivered perfect plants in exceptional condition. It's taken time to establish confidence and trust and integrity. And we're able to demonstrate that in the way that we send our plants out. Once people have bought from us, they realise that we can supply to a really good standard. We would be very, very happy to turn mail order customers into customers who come in and shop with us. We'd love to meet you. We are going to be launching a loyalty scheme which will encourage customers to come back more regularly so they'll get rewarded for actually spending money here, which is always a good thing. We're also going to be launching an events programme which will run through the autumn and winter. We're going to develop a meeting room where we can have school visits and group visits and community project visits. We've got some very active groups in Lost With things like the Transition Movement are involved in growing and we've got some really good schools and we want to engage with those people and help them realise their goals to enhance what they're doing. It doesn't matter what you want to spend or how much space you've got, even if you just want to plant one pot, we can help and advise you about the best selection.